Good afternoon, comic book fans. Uh, how are you? It's me. It's Comic Crack. Um, some stuff in the mail today, and uh, I was reading some Matt Howarth last night that I wanted to just briefly talk about as well. Not sure if anybody's going to be around, so you'll probably see this on the replay. Um, I had placed an order, a couple of orders, one with Partners and Son, and uh, one with uh, Mr. Patrick Keck. Um, he of uh, uh, Dream of the Bat, Infamy, with Josh Simmons. Uh, they had a... I'll, I'll show this first, actually. They had a... Uh, sticker sheet from <laughs> dream of the bat hello chris chaos and comics how are you um they had a sticker sheet that i i couldn't resist uh so i figured while i was picking it up i'd order something else directly from him uh but these are much bigger than i thought they were going to be and they look fucking amazing so super happy about that <laughs> um just ridiculously good for those of you who are fans of this, Colin Blanchett, yes, in the daytime, absolutely extra naughty. The kids are in school, so uh, you can't gather them around the computer screen. So when I grabbed that one, I figured I'd get something else from him, uh, from Mr. Keck. And this is a something called Farthead, which is just a, a kind of magazine-sized um, copy of... Uh, some of his stuff from his sketchbook. Uh, 2022, October 2022. Pretty great stuff. I do like his style. Um, there's even uh, a, ro a Robin drawing in here as well, too, that I'll show you in one sec. But a nice kind of sampling of uh, his twisted, sick mind. There you go. There's uh, Robin there. And his uh, Dick Sprang-ish version. So that's cool. Really great. Nice guy. Came really quick. The stuff that I grabbed from Partners and Son, uh, they sent me a couple extra things too. Postcards, sticker, that sort of thing. The main reason I wanted to grab something from them is for this uh, travel diary by uh, Scott Finch. Um, I'd seen this on Domino's uh, Domino Books website. Um, and I was going to grab it, but I missed the boat on it. It sold out. So I contacted Scott um, on Instagram just to see if he had copies and maybe buy something directly from him. Uh, he said he did, but uh, turned me on to Partners and Son and said, maybe you want to check them out, um, which uh, was a, a better idea because, I mean, if it's going to cost me so much to ship, I may as well get a few other small things thrown in as well. Um, but I'm very, very happy to have this. I haven't looked through this one yet. Um, got high praise on um, Ryan Carey's site as well, too, or his uh, his Patreon. Beautiful colors in this. Remember that time I said I could read black and white comics for the rest of my life? I was lying. Give me color as well. Uh, when it's done like this and, and beautiful, sort of, um, yeah, ju it just looks amazing. Very, uh, I don't even know the words. I have no idea. It's comics, just uh, just yes. It's going in the 500 comic goal because it's comics, because I say so. Uh, looks beautiful though, really, really like the looks of this. Um, speaking of which, I'm over 100 now in the comics goal there, Chris. Where are you sitting at? I haven't been checking in on you. So beautiful stuff. Uh, that's Scott Finch Travel Diary. And then got a couple of other cheap um, little uh, zines books. This is called Cactus Forest, just like a four pager um, for three bucks. Arthur Cameron from 2021. There's contact information. Oh, about 80. Okay. Contact information for him. Uh, another one, it just kind of jumped out at me looking at the, the images that they had on the website. Some felt marker color in there. 
this I've seen a number of times on some websites. I think there's three issues of it. I don't really, I don't really remember. Feral Star by John Burkett. Uh, this is number zero. Um, and I always end up kind of looking at it, putting it in a cart, taking it out of a cart. Um, but this time I thought I'd give it a shot. This is part one from August 2022, the second printing, Moon Dust. Hello. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that there is one uh, about the Zodiac. I don't know, they did movies, there was books. I'm sure there was a comic as well too. Um, Colin might know in the chat here. Don't know anything about this sci-fi. It looked sharp and uh, figured it was about time to take the plunge and grab one, but I really like the look of this. Some dense looking uh, pages here. Look at that, beauty. And the other one that I wanted to finally take a jump into, this was the only issue that they had on Partners and Sons. I know that, uh, again, it's another one that I've seen on Domino and it's probably come in and out of a, um, come in and out of my, my shopping cart there. This is Hyper Mutt, number two by Max Huffman. Um, again, super intriguing looking stuff. Very interesting looking cartooning. Uh, I don't know if I've read anybody, not even uh, our Lord and Savior, Ryan Carey. I'm not even sure if he's talked about this one or written about this one. I'd have to look at his Patreon a little closer. But it's it's one of those books that I do see in an, on a number of uh, sites. And figured I'd give it a shot. I think there might be four of these out, four or five of these out right now, so be great to just dive right in so just a, a few a few things there look at that it really reminds me of um what the heck is that other artist's name uh hello paulo costa how are you good evening to you branu pratap i think is that uh, is that his name um, kind of has that uh, style going on there. So that's it for the mail call. Last night, reading some more uh, Matt Howarth. Uh, only have this one issue of the Savage Henry Power Chords three-issue miniseries. Yeah, Pratap, it, it, incredible stuff, Chaos and Comics. Yeah, absolutely. Really, really amazing. Um, this one featuring Dave Brock from Hawkwind, uh, this three issue mini, uh, Dear Mother was easy. That's the word, name of it, Dear Mother and other stories. Yeah, I, I would agree. It was a, a real standout book for sure. Um, Savage Handy Power Chords, three issue mini series, 2004 is when this came out from Aeon. Uh, I was reading this last night really digging into the back matter. He talks a lot about, uh, he focuses on some music as well in this one and does kind of reviews. Um, and I ended up listening to some of it last night. He talks obviously about some of his favorite Hawkwind albums, but then he talks also about this band called Quark Space, uh, who I've never heard of before. Found them on um, Bandcamp and uh, Howarth did a CD uh, slash comic with uh, Quark Space and uh, the band themselves sell it on their band camp so um, comes with like a, a, a CD comic of I don't know what they say 16 pages or something like that so uh, I may spring for that next uh, band camp Friday but listening to some of it I listened to um, I listened to Space Folds 6 and Space Folds 5 uh, Space Folds 5 starts off with a just amazing, amazing track. And then uh, Space Folds 6 was strong throughout the entire uh, the entire album. Really, really nice stuff. Um, started listening to Space Folds 7, but only got like a track or so in before I had to hit the hay. And then a sideband, Gary Usher, hello. 
Um, Church of Head is a side band from uh, the synthesizer player and somebody else in it. Uh, I get the impression that it's all it's all kind of labeled as like the synth um, space space rock, I guess. Um, but it's very very synth driven, pretty uh, psychedelic at points. But I, I get the impression that it's mostly um, improvised when they do these albums. And then I was looking at uh, Bugtown. I ended up going online too to see his Bugtown Mall. So back then, man, um, Savage Henry number one twenty bucks. Those annoying Post Brothers, forty bucks. Wowzers! I hope uh, I hope he um, <laughs> hope he cashed in on that one because that one you're finding in fifty cent bins at this point. Uh, some stuff sold out is always nice to see. So really great. He the the thing that I'm really appreciating about Howarth recently is his ability to pull you into this humongous world and not only that he creates on the page but then these extra things like this music um checking out his back catalog just digging more into kind of things that he's worked on really really fun and i mean a lot of the time the music that he's focusing on too is stuff that i'm already kind of a fan of um hawkwind obviously classic band uh at lemmy was in hawkwind early days from motorhead um some really really great stuff so it's been really fun to kind of get into more of his stuff so i know that he had appeared in heavy metal magazine so i finally last night did a search online and then just looked in my uh back catalog of heavy metal to pull it out i, I believe this is the first time he appeared in heavy metal so this is february 1980 He'd been working in music fanzines since 1969, according to Wikipedia. Um, I don't know how much art he was doing at the time or if he was doing writing. Like I said, it really feels like he was deep into music. Um, so it, it was interesting to dig into the stuff here because while it does have Howarth written all over it, um, it's not quite, here we go. It's not quite the same as um, that early Post Brothers stuff. But still very cool. And there's one continuing story throughout these called Changes, which I'm pretty sure got collected, didn't it, into its own uh, book. So from what I can tell so far, the stuff that appeared in Heavy Metal did not um, make up the first couple of issues of the Post Brothers. But I'm only, I'm only about six issues into this 1980 run right now um and i think i'm coming up to having some gaps i don't have a ton of uh, heavy metal from the 80s i'm missing quite a few so uh, we'll see how far i can make it um still pretty great it's the post brothers it's still that introduction of the world even though some of the yeah thank you colin yeah colin, changes did get collected um some of the characters uh that we know from uh, later issues one that actually appeared in the savage henry power chords um, looks entirely different uh there's caroline for example who looks pretty drastically different this is the clone character um that appears later on and this is uh, miss hiroshima who again looks pretty different in uh, this power chords issue that i was reading uh, she makes an appearance in this the the guy the uh savage henry and um dave brock from hawkwind have have done a show they found this um what they think is a shortwave radio at a flea market look at this page this is a really nice one and um they hit the same chord at the same time in a live performance and uh these aliens from another dimension are able to enter their dimension so um uh so hello john claire how are you yes a tuesday stream a rare a rare thing so miss hiroshima comes back to kind of help them uh put things back in order um nice stuff like i said you really do get a sense but the character designs the characters look even more photo referenced than uh he turned into later like there's a definite feel to a character like this for example but still very much uh howarth um it was also fun looking through this this is um artist mirko illich 
Uh, this one stood out to me as well, a silent black and white story that I thought was really beautiful looking. So it's fun revisiting these uh, issues of heavy metal. Just to kind of uh, dip your toes back into, in this case, the 1980s. Uh, there was also a Terrence Lindell in one of these as well. It wasn't in this one. Um, another, a guy who's one of my favorites, did a lot of covers. There was an ad in one of them as well for a uh, course that you could take. You could go and hang out with uh, Lindell and um, learn uh, some art making techniques from him. And they were selling some postcards and things too. I feel like it was right at the back of one of these issues, but of course I won't be able to find it. So we'll look at just a little bit more of this Howarth. It's usually right at the back here. So this is um, March 1980. There's the front cover there. So this is the first in what is changes. So you get a portrait of the artist himself there with a bit of an intro about the Post brothers, Ron and Ross and uh, their world and how they can um, move through uh, dimensions. Shift, they can shift is what the word he uses. Um, how do they shift instantly and naturally? You could assume it to be a biological function if you wish, but keep in mind that this is only in Mike's case does the massive drug intake have any bearing on the ability. Um, my screen went blank there for a second. Hopefully I'm still, hopefully I'm still broadcasting. Beautiful. Love his lettering on it. He sets these up as almost like one page uh, strips. So again, I don't know if these um, appeared somewhere else before they got collected for heavy metal. Um, you get that impression. But in this one, also using a lot of uh, just photos to make up like landscapes and stuff, which is a pretty neat look and something that I, I haven't seen him do in any of the other comics. Who's still here? Yes, I'm still. Oh, I'm still here. Oh, yes, because it went black. Uh, there's some more there. And then this one here, this page. Pretty amazing stuff. So, yeah, I'll keep digging through these for sure. And uh, I'm now jonesing for <laughs> any other Howarth that I can get my hands on. I know on his Bugtown site... Um, you can get a bunch of digital comics. Um, I, I saw that he did have some print copies of some of his books available too. So it might be uh, it might be the thing of ordering directly from him instead of uh, instead of going through a place like Lone Star or something, maybe uh, shoot Howarth some money. That power cords, for example, I saw that he did have all three issues for sale on his site for only a, a couple of dollars a piece. Um, I think it was two fifty a piece or something maybe something like that or maybe it was three bucks because the cover price on them was 295 so yeah really nice pages Colin for sure and again it's interesting seeing him uh, utilizing a couple of other techniques this is really great here I love this perspective um, interesting seeing him utilize a couple of other techniques to make up this art uh, as much as I, I love his heavily pixelated and detailed backgrounds. This is pretty cool to see as well. <clears throat> but like I said, still very much, very, very much Howarth. Uh, we'll quickly look at one more and then we'll call it. So this is April, 1980. Uh, there's also some squites in it in some of these as well, too. Um, Bilal, Mobius, Corbin, Howarth. Not in this one, of course. Kaza is in some of these as well, too, with some reprints from, uh, I think it was like 1977. Yeah, here's one, for example, that's in that collection, that Kaza collection that I have. Uh, gorgeous. And they, they, you know, from my memory, they 
reproduced it incredibly well in the collected edition because those colors look exactly as I remember them. There's a long article about uh, Underground Comics as well that goes through a few of the issues. Uh, three or four of the issues, I think a three or four parter. So here's more changes. This is High Rise, beautiful page, this one. There's some of his pixelated backgrounds there in the planet. Uh, a Batman character making an appearance here. They've taken a lot of drugs and now shifted to a dimension and they're, they're trapped in it now. Um, in one of the later issues, they, uh, they get, <laughs> they, they turn into a comic strip and it's um, a take on Fabulous Furry Freak Brothers. And they look like uh, Phineas and Freewheel and Franklin, uh, which is kind of great. Just for a quick three panels, they show a comic strip and you're brought into a, a group of people that are now talking about Matt Howarth himself. Who is this Matt Howarth and how does he know so much about our world? Um, very cool. Actually, since it's not the next one, but the one after, ah, here we go. Here's the um, summer vacation opportunity, Terrence Lindahl. Uh, and at the time you could buy um, some posters and there was a postcard set as well. But um there's June, July, or August sessions, a four-week workshop for artists, writers, or persons interested in the field on a country estate in Upper New York State near recreational areas. Includes accommodations and informal guidance under the direction of Terrence Lindell. Tuition $600 for four-week session. Let's have a quick flip to see if that Lindell... Has some pages in this one. It's not looking like it. Uh, sorry, one sec here. No, nope, not in that one. Uh, did Howarth invest invent computer lettering for comics? Very good question, Paulo. Um, that lettering looks like early word processor type. That's a very good question. I don't know. Um, Joan and Jello, John, he's a, a huge Howarth guy. I wish he was around. He'd be able to tell us. There you go, uh, Colin. A little uh, guy, Caldwell, in uh, this issue. Just on that, no strips or anything, just that piece of art. Uh, May 1980 is this issue here. That was a nice surprise to open up to. Paul Kirchner. The Paul Kirchner stuff is great in here too. He does the bus, but there's a couple of issues where he does a strip as well. Uh, I'm not seeing Lindell's name here either. Let's have a quick look at the last issue because I'll show you that. Freak Brothers. And this is June 1980. Uh, Bernie Wrightson is in here. Captain Stern is in this issue. John Workman, Scoyton brothers are in here at the back. We'll have a look at that too. I'll uh, we'll just go to the um, Howarth quickly here. <coughs> here we go. So this is where they uh, appear as a fabulous furry freak brothers strip in the, in the comic itself as they again get shifted to another dimension. And then we kind of zoom out to uh, a few characters talking about the Bull Daggers, um, which is the Savage Henry group, and uh, talking about the comic strip and talking about who this uh, Matt Howarth is. Who is this Howarth anyway? How does he know about all this anyway? So. The very last panel.
Yes, their credit illustration by uh, Peter Goodfellow is this illustration here, Chaos. And we'll take a quick look at the Skoitin as well. Here we go right here at the end. Um, one that I don't know, localized objective. So I'm wondering, there's that one hardcover that I'm missing from uh, Humanoids. There was a three-volume Humanoid series of Skoitin work. And I'm wondering if stuff that was in heavy metal was in that first volume because it's kind of a collection of short stories. But uh, this is gorgeous looking stuff. And again, his kind of his underworldly um, environments here. But this is really beautiful. This face is unbelievable there. Gorgeous stuff. Uh, I think Pepe Moreno used some computer lettering inside his art. Not sure about Mike Sainz. Uh, but Matt Howarth in 1980 is at least a very early adopter. Yeah. And there we go. There's the last bit of that. So it's, it's a blast going through these heavy metal issues, to say the least. Thanks very much, fellas. Nice to see you all. I'm glad that you were able to uh, join me. Fuck, I love this thing so much. Glad you were able to join me. I hope you're having a good day. And uh, we will talk to you on Sunday. Later.